Thanks. Um, uh, very much appreciate the opportunity to be here today. Um, I want to first echo a few of, of Ralph's remarks that certainly the, the, the paradigm of development has not shifted in Canada and it most certainly has not shifted in Western Canada where we have a, a growing uh, tar sands industry and, and continued um, uh, development of our uh, fossil fuel resources. It needs a bit of expert help here. Thank you. Um, so the paradigm hasn't shifted, and I want to kind of apply that, you know, pro apply that problem or try to understand that problem in the context of several environmental assessments that I've been involved with over the past number of years. Um, just looking at Canada and the sort of the bleak situation we're in in Canada with respect to greenhouse gas emissions, our emissions have continued to increase since 1990, uh, even though that, in that year, the government of Canada made a commitment to start reducing them. And unfortunately, the oil sands are the fastest growing source of new greenhouse gas emissions in Canada. And how has the federal environmental assessment system assisted in reducing those greenhouse gas emissions? I would argue not at all. Part of the problem is the way the, uh, the, our, the federal legislation is written. Um, the, the Canadian Environmental Assessment Act fo focuses on assessing adverse environmental effects of projects and other directly related socioeconomic effects, et cetera, um, determining the significance of those effects and proposing measures to mitigate them. So it's tightly focused on figuring out what the effects are, adversity, significance, mitigation. I guess the, the point I want to make ultimately is, is that that system really doesn't work when we're, when we're talking about trying to reduce greenhouse gas emissions from these big projects, let alone achieving sustainable societies, which Ralph has mentioned. I think that's, that should be the overall goal of our, of, our, um, of our environmental assessment system. So the first project I want to t talk about, which really kind of set me off personally, was this gigantic uh, oil sands project in Alberta, the Curl Oil Sands Project. All the projects I'm about to talk about are all private sector uh, projects, uh, ma uh, mainly by the, the big multinational oil companies. This is a huge tar sands mine. It was approved a couple of years ago. It's going to produce 346,000 barrels of bitumen per day. Um, it's producing close to 4 million tons of carbon dioxide per year, equivalent to putting 800,000 cars on the road. So you have this joint panel review, this federal-provincial joint panel review, which reviewed the project, and they said a number of useful things, but they said, hmm, the, in terms of greenhouse gas emissions, even though we're producing close to four megatons a year, it won't have a significant adverse effect on global climate. And that's probably true. But one asks, well, what are we doing if we can approve such a gigantic project and just basically dismiss the, the idea that, um, that, that, uh, that the, an emissions intensity approach is going gonna, is gonna to do the work for us. Sierra Club took them to court on that, and we basically got a court judgment telling the panel to go back and basically asking the question, how could you guys approve uh, this project and say that there aren't any significant effects associated with um, greenhouse gas emissions, your greenhouse gas emissions vis-a-vis -vis global climate. Well, the, um, the panel responded to the court, but they basically blew them off. They didn't really do a serious analysis at all, but at that point, you know, Sierra Club, uh, Ecojustice, we've got very little money to pursue these guys in court, um, so we had to drop it there. So, so to me, what that pointed out was this idea of identifying the significance of greenhouse gas emissions for global climate change, it's just not a model that's going to get us anywhere. Okay, the next project, the Mackenzie Gas Project, and I've been involved in that for seven or eight years. This is um, a bigger project. Uh, it'll probably be $20 billion, U.S. or Canadian. Um, it'll bring natural gas from the Mackenzie Delta by the Arctic Ocean through to northern Alberta. Uh, it's going to produce depending on how they scale it up, between 1.2, 1.8 billion cubic feet of natural gas per, per day. 
And the key, el the key aspect of this project is it's going to open up the entire Northwest Territories to natural gas and other type of development. So it's truly what they call a basin opening project. So it's hugely important to the Northwest Territories and to the rest of Canada. So this, uh, this panel reported in 2009. Uh, this project also is going to produce huge amounts of greenhouse gas emissions, especially when you roll in the downstream um, projects with them. And the panel said, yeah, we can't say that this project, even with all of the other associated induced development, is going to have a significant adverse effect on global climate. But we're not going to leave it there. We're going to, uh, we're going to take a sustainability approach because we think that's a way that we can really try and figure out how to green up this pipeline. The panel understood that, that the adverse effects on global climate from any one mega project, no matter how big it is, is never going to be able to, it will never be significant global because there's just too much other stuff going on. The panel asked, would the project made a, make a positive contribution to ecological, economic, and social sustainability? So they asked that sustainability question directly. How is this project going to help? They addressed five, five, five issues in, in, in following through on that analysis. I, I, won't run them all, won't, won't, I won't run through all of them, but there were five of them. One of them is equity, and by that they meant intergenerational equity. They meant equity as between, you know, between men and women. Um, they talked about the ability of governments to deliver on their provinces should they actually approve the project. So they looked at a wide range of sustainability issues. With respect to greenhouse gases, they said that, that carbon offsets and end use of the gas, i.e., is this gas going to be used to fuel oil sands growth? Because this, this, you know, the, the, the natural gas from this project would mainly be used for the oil sands. Is it going to be used for that purpose? Or could we require that it be used to uh, displace coal-fired generating, of which there's a ton in Alberta, or just maybe heat people's homes so it would actually have a, a positive effect in terms of as a transition fuel. Um, they also talked, as I mentioned, they, already they talked about offsets. They, ultimately, they said, listen, we can't, we can't require the, the, um, the proponent to be carbon neutral in its operations, and we can't, we, and we can't um, mandate market intervention to specify end uses of the natural gas. They felt that that wasn't fair to the proponent. Uh, they said the, 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 it's, really, it's really up to governments to figure out how to do these things through climate policies, plans, strategies, of which Canada is noticeably bankrupt. Um, we really have got, we got, we got nothing happening really at the federal level. There's a few things happening in, in the provinces. Uh, what they did say was they recommended that Canada develop a strategy to optimize the benefits of using natural gas as a transitional fuel towards a sustainable low carbon economy. And they also recommended that this strategy ensure that gas is, nat is preferentially used to replace and not augment carbon intensive fuels. Let's use natural gas to replace coal fired, to replace tar sands, rather than to augment th the burning of those other fuels. They also, and of interest perhaps to the discussions yesterday, um, the, this panel also re recommended that, that Canada develop an environmental assessment guidance document on assessing greenhouse gas emissions in which sustainability is the overall or overarching objective. So uh, is sustainability assessment coming to Canada? Well, maybe. I mean, we've already got a number of laws applicable to, the, um, uh, to northern Canada under comprehensive claims with First Nations peoples um, that do actually uh, uh, take a sustainability approach. Uh, there's a seven-year review coming up on the federal legislation in which some of us are going to be pushing for a, more of a sustainability approach to environmental assessment. Um, and we're at, at, the, at the operational level, we're, we're pushing in, at, at, at pro, in projects. And one of which I was involved in this, this autumn was hearings for the next biggest oil sands mine in northern Alberta. This one only has 1.5 megatons of emissions, 270,000 cars on the road. They don't have any plans to include carbon capture and storage, notwithstanding that this is been, been put forward as the silver bullet in terms of um, oil sands development and also uh, for coal fire generating. Uh, those, those hearings winded up in October and we'll see what that panel has to say. So at, at the end of the day, what should we be doing in Canada in order to 
move us forward towards a sustainable society or a sustainable energy future, I think we have to legislate sustainability assessment and, and move away from this m much more narrow approach of identifying adverse effects, looking at their significance, figuring out mitigation measures. Thank you very much.